Hello and welcome back. And yes, that's right. The Synology range of hard drives are now official. It's something we've already talked about here on the channel a few times. But after all the little bits and bobs that were popping up on the channel and spreadsheets and PDFs and stuff getting knocked around, it is now official. The range of Synology hard drives, the HAT5300 or the HAT5300. Not in love with that name, if I'm honest, but let's get by the by. Um, and today we're going to talk about a number of the specifications and arguably some of the service advantages that Synology are saying that this range of drives are going to arrive with. Now, today is just over overlooking those specifications and talking a lot about what these drives apparently are promised to be able to provide, but of course we're going to be comparing them against things like Seagate Ironwolf, WD Red, Toshiba N300, Ultrastar Exos, The Works, because these drives are a very interesting part of the whole uh, range of hard drives that are out there. They seem to be, I'm not gonna say not pro, because there's certainly a lot of pro features about them, but they are lovely and well-placed, I would say, in terms of their specifications between that of standard drives and enterprise top, 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 top-end drives, but not without the price tag up there from what I am seeing. Before we go any further, quick disclaimer, right away off the bat, there is work happening into the building I am in right now. I am very close to the microphone and I will edit out as much sound as I can, but occasionally the odd drill or a workman or Gerald the Seagull is going to get in there in the audio. So I apologise in advance if any of those get in there. But let's talk about them. These drives currently are going to be available. Uh, it has been launched right now, so they are technically available right now, but I very much imagine that stock's not really going to be out there in any meaningful supply for at least a week or two, like any kind of new release whenever we see these announcements. Um, they're going to be in 8TB, 12TB, and 16TB. There's no uh, smaller denominations at this time, and these are very much with Enterprise right there on the label, not just the end user there. Now, these are 7200 RPM drives there, so none of your 54, 57, or 5900. These are straight there at the 7200 RPM. They are um, CMR drives as well, conventional magnetic recording or PMR, perpendicular magnetic recording. There's none of that um, sh uh, shingled stuff here. There's none of that available. Um, and these are arriving with 256 megabytes of cache or in the larger capacities, 512 megabytes of cache, which again, very much puts them in the enterprise grade quality with the WD Pros, with the Seagate Iron Wolf Pros, even your Ultra Stars as well. Uh, it's tapping into there, into the drives that we talk about here on the channel. Uh, they have a sustained reported uh, performance top end of 275 megabytes per second. That's on Synology's own reported pages there. But it's worth highlighting that each of the individual drives does have a top end sustained read write reported at 230, 242 and 262 megabytes per second there in terms of of uh, performance so do bear that in mind but again that sustained figure is more likely an average doesn't mean it's not true but it certainly is one that i think it's a lot more important to uh, concentrate on the individual uh, sustained maximum performance thresholds um, that synology are putting out there um, they do talk about mean time between failure and again uh, sorry, mean time between uh, mean time to failure, MTTF and MTBF, kind of fallen out of vogue when it comes out of measuring the the lifespan. A lot of people concentrate a lot more on um, terabytes written and data rights per day. Uh, more open than anything, even though these drives do have a 2.5 million hour MTTF, I would definitely focus more on the reported uh, 550 terabytes workload per year within that five-year warranty. That's right, these drives are five-year warranty. Very good stuff there. And again, it moves them out of the non-pro bracket significantly and into those pro series drives with the higher end architecture internally, the more sustained high read-write performance reported, and of course, five years of manufacturer's warranty. But there's a few things that I think Synology need to make abundantly clear and have done for the most part on their pages when it comes to people that are either going to buy these drives first time or, or are thinking of moving over uh, next time they upgrade their drives away from some, you know, the big you know, big brands, again, WD, Seagate, Toshiba, that sort of thing, and moving towards their series of hard drives. Um, first and foremost, um, Synology have put out there that these drives um, have been stress tested prior to release. Their whole development cycle, I should say, um, with over 300,000 hours 
of uh, stress testing performed across these to tweak them as much as possible. On top of that, uh, in terms of compatibility, Synology have applied these models to the compatibility list of pretty much all drives. I'm sure there's a graphic on screen there. Um, we looked into a number of the different models. And again, I, I could have gone straight into Enterprise, but I thought a lot of you, uh, one of the early things that we discussed in some of the preview and kind of found information uh, content that I've produced on these drives, a number of us were worried or at least a little bit disconcerted that Synology would go down the same road with these hard drives as they have done with their own memory and their own SSD expansion cards insofar as saying, in some cases, if you use um, third-party modules in their equipment, then your warranty will not be available in the normal sense that you're using an unsupported configuration and therefore they can't provide support on an unsupported configuration. That was very much their stance. And a number of us were worried that this would extend to the hard drives. It looks like that is not the case. If you look at the compatibility lists, and again, I went straight for the DS920, a very popular NAS, and straight there, right at the top, unsurprisingly, is Synology's own HAT5300 hard drives. Um, obviously they're at the top, it's not alphabetical, don't worry, it is generally they've put it up there and that's kind of understandable given it's their first party product and they are going to give it preferential treatment and they back it up a little bit on their product pages but I'm pleased to say that we haven't seen the removal of WDC again and none of that has happened and hopefully that is exactly how things will change. Um, with regards to another little advantage that I'm really looking forward to seeing in the GUI their drives are going to allow you to upgrade the drive firmware from within DSM. Now, we've been able to see this done on their range of SSDs that they've released less than a year ago, the SNV um, and the SAT5200 range of Synology SSDs. Um, it's great to see that we're going to be able to update our drive firmware from within Synology DSM. And as these drives are specifically tailored towards Synology NAS hardware, the result will be that these drives will be able to be tweaked or um, refined in line with the growth of DSM and the hardware platform as a whole. And that can't be a bad thing. And I'm specifically talking to you IT guys that had to update the firmware on hard drives from Seagate and WD and Toshiba and the like, because there's very few ways uh, to uh, directly upgrade the firmware on drives within a NAS from third-party brands. If you try to update, for example, a Seagate IronWolf firmware, you generally have to use their own client toolkit applications, and a lot of them you have to remove the drive and put it into a docking station and use you know, a, a Linux or Windows machine, uh, ideally, to upgrade that firmware. It's a huge pain and you can't help but worry about what you're doing with removing drives between systems in terms of uh, reinitialization or anything like that. So it's great to see that the firmware updates can be actioned on these drives inside DSM. I think it would be remiss of Synology to produce hard drives and not <laughs> include that feature. Now, I am going to remain as, you know, a little sceptical on these, let's be honest, because Synology do not have the history of Seagate and WD and the like in hard drives and even when they compare the performance of these drives and show that their sustained performance is considerably higher they don't really name the other drives and on the one hand it's a classy thing not to go we are better than them i get that but a number of users are gonna want to know how they sit and where they compare with other drives and of course we are as soon as we get hands on these drives going to perform a number of those tests we're going to look about how these drives compare in access in terms of noise very important that one and how you know the results of their utilization both inside a Synology system and with third-party client software pointed at the NAS but for now I'm interested to see where we're going to go with these drives now pricing right now is a little in the air. No doubt Synology have put out reported pricing and a few websites have already started listing these drives. Generally, I found the 8TBs at $250, the 12TBs at $350 and the 16TBs at about $450, which aligns them quite well um, with Pro Series drives and Enterprise Class drives. Although I will say that in some cases, Pro Series drives from the current brands at that price point are actually a little higher so it's gonna i don't think synology would ever lowball with these drives and sell them at a loss i don't think that's there they generally don't seem to do that but they seem to have been a little bit more um sensible about the pricing on these than they have done 
with a, a number of us thought about their SNV and SAT5200 series of drives. Um, but that's pretty much everything we know about these drives now at launch. We will, of course, be covering more content on these here and on the other YouTube channel and on As Compares and more. So do click subscribe to you know stay in the loop on those and how these drives compare with the other drives. And of course, if you have found this video uh, helpful, do click like just to let me know that you do so I know you guys are interested in this. And please, 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 I cannot, cannot talk about this enough. Go into the comments and tell me what you think about these drives. It's very, very important because this is a very interesting development from the guys at Synology there. And I think it's another move from them to become an all-encompassing solution provider in terms of hardware, software, media, and more. And a number of people who buy Synology hardware products are going to be very, very, very happy about this. And there's going to be a few other people that don't quite like being restrained. So it's going to be very interesting to hear the discourse on this below in the comments. So do let me know what you think about these drives. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And I will see you next time.